All right, listen, Tastic, you be quiet over there, right? So um, I wanted to introduce uh, a couple of people that came with me from Jersey Jack Pinball. This is Mark Seiden. Hello. You're I guess I guess a couple of you good people know Mark, huh? Native native son, local boy makes good. Local boy becomes pinball designer. That's the American dream, I guess, right? Right there. He's very talented and we're very thrilled to have him be part of the company and he fits in perfectly and I would tell you all about his game, but I can't. I will. I'll tell you oh. all later though. Later. Okay. <laughs> Steve, on the other hand, he's got a real big mouth. If you get a few drinks in him, he's going to spill the guts from World War II. He'll, he'll tell you who shot JFK and who's going to win, who's going to win the World Series. He'll let you know everything. Right, Steve? Yeah. And the other person with me yeah, is, is the amazing king of flow, the king of pinball, the innovator of so many things pinball, the greatest selling pinball designer ever, Steve Ritchie, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't rather do anything else in the world. I wouldn't rather do anything else in the world except make pinball. So I'm going to ask Steve uh, to talk a little bit, and then I'll ask Mark to talk a little bit. We'll take some questions. We have some dessert coming, too, and we have a couple of surprises later, maybe a Q&A uh, trivia contest kind of thing, and we'll have some fun. What the heck? Everybody, that's what we're here for, right? We make these games to put smiles on your face. We try to make some money now and then, too. That might help keep the lights on, keep everybody paid. But really, this is a passion. This is something that we love to do. Uh, we're actually honored to do it. Um, I'm very blessed. I'm doing this a long time. I don't even want to say a number anymore. I, I, you know, it's just... My dad, my dad was an accountant, and after he was an accountant like 30 years, 40 years, he started saying, more than 20 years experience. So <laughs> let's just say I have more than 20 years experience doing everything, and I'm happy to do it, and it's uh, very exciting. So take it away, Steve. Take right. your unscripted uh, script. Away. <coughs> I want to say this first. Um, working at Jersey Jack has been a great experience. Like, hate to say, it, way more fun than I had at the previous company was I forgot the name. I think it's like <laughs> STEM. I think that's it, STEM. And uh, uh, you, yeah, I, was <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Anyway, <laughs> so we anyway. Yes, uh, this is generous. Yeah. <laughs> Not a one. All right, yeah, fine. Next, nice, thanks. All right. Anyway, life is good at Jersey Jack. <laughs> He's throwing money at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean, there's a lot of people at Stern that I love. They're my friends. I can't help it. I've known them for years and years. Uh, you guys know them, too. You know, it's, uh, but not Gary. Uh, no. And, uh, Damn it, Steve. What? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's really nice. And I, now I want to speak to a couple of other people. Uh, one of them is a guy sitting on my right. He has been a tremendous help on my game. I know he, he walks in. He, he, he knows something about pinball. He's done, you know, a, a home game and all that. He's, he's a project, which, is, which means basically a lot of suffering. <laughs> a whole lot of suffering. That's it. When you build your own game. And, uh, Anyway, he helped me tremendously. He has um, uh, a lot of knowledge about designing things. Uh, and pinball's coming along uh, just fine for Mark. He's making a good game, uh, but he's like a 3D, and so he drew some parts that I needed drawing. I'm not. I'm 2D. 2D is fast. I can get my game done uh, quicker, or at least get a start on it so people can see what I'm doing. But 3D is like anyone can use the 3D program to produce the part, right? So Mark did that and um, a lot of other things, just suggestions, and uh, we've become good friends. And that's my view, but it might not be his. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> nice. Anyway, 
Anyway, uh, I've, uh, we have become. <laughs> <laughs> we have be good. Uh, we have become good friends. Um, also, with his wife Erin, and uh, there's somebody else I want to speak to. Uh, yes, definitely. And um, he's kind of a new employee, but uh, I was going in a panic because we have a shop where we build our prototype games. And the guy that built them got canned. Uh, and it was kind of his fault, but I was starting to go into, uh, I don't know, just a bad place without having a guy to build games in the lab. So uh, this guy comes along. Uh, I, I think told you he'll say anything. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> You guys didn't believe me, right? You didn't believe me. Okay. Anyway, this guy, is, it turns out, has great pinball experience and a lot of knowledge, and um, it's been a pleasure to work with him and build with him. Um, and we're talking about Drew Young. He has to stand up right now. Get up. Stand up. And his lovely wife, Vicky. Anyway. New friendships, good time. The game is, the game is frickin' magnificent. I'm sorry, I, can't, I shouldn't say that. It's like I'm patting myself on the back, but I'm not. There's 15 other people involved in making, you know, in making this thing happen. So, but we're very excited, and uh, it's Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> Without a Disney license. <laughs> I'm not I thought it was My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah. You've been working on that game for 10 years. No, My Little Pony, yeah. It's my yeah, Little Pony. On the back burner. can't use Barbie as a ruler anymore. So, um, what is it? Working at Jersey Jack, you know, it's been a 180 degree turn for me, and it's been a lot of fun and very exciting. And finally, I, I haven't had a game out on the street like in three and a half years. I made I made the uh, <coughs> the James Bond playfields for Stern before I left. They didn't use either one of them. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, I made an LE and a a uh, you know a pro model. So uh, I haven't had one on the street, and I'm very excited to get this guy out and in production and uh, and watch people enjoy it. Hopefully. Anyway, that's what I have to say, and thank you for listening. I'm sure I'm sure you'll have I'm sure you'll have more to say. I'm sure you'll have more to say. Well, I'm Mark Seiden, the newest designer at Jersey Jack. Um, I don't have nearly as much to say as Steve, um, but it's 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 been it, this is my dream job. I love every minute of it. I get I love that I got to work with Steve, Pat, Eric. Um, all help me get going and uh, teach me what they know. It's um, uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the people I work with at Jersey Jack. It's, it's I don't just have a to great give him company. Any money. <laughs> He's already given me all the money, so it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't have a game out yet, but um, I'm really looking forward to showing you what we, we're, we've been working on. So. Yeah, you know, it's it's a hard thing when you um, when you have uh, these games in process, and these take a long time. Um, years, literally, uh, when we start thinking of an idea, then we go get a license and all the things. I'm going to stand up so everybody can see me. All the things that it that it takes to get a game and get the assets so that they have the um, you know all all the tools they need to make a really great game. With with Steve's game, I'm going to tease you a little bit. Um, I made Steve a promise before he came to the company that he was going to get uh, a chance to do whatever he wanted to do on the game. And nobody was going to tell him to take anything off the game. And doing that changes everything. Because nobody's going to come to him and say, take that off the game. But doing that also, what it did, it put a lot of pressure on him. Because Steve will tell you, and I'll use my best Brooklyn, if, if three people tell you something is no good, it's no good. That's a saying that he lives by with design, right? Yes. And uh, there wasn't anybody that came to him and said that on his game. 
there were some times where some people wondered, when is he going to finish X, Y, Z? You know, when is he going to do that? Maybe, maybe that doesn't need to be there that way, or maybe that doesn't need to be there. Maybe it could be there a different way. And um, not everybody's Steve Ritchie. I'm just going to say that. I know it's kind of silly to say that. Kind of, not everybody's Steve Ritchie, but um, he got a chance to do it. And for me personally, um, you know, I'm going to just put it out there. I think this is like his best game in many, many, many years. Many, many years. Yeah, well, he, he, made, he made a lot of great games, you know. I'm not talking about him like he's not here or he's dead or something, God forbid. <laughs> so I know he's going to say something. But, you know, he, the first time I saw Black Knight, I was at an arcade in Coney Island. You know, we opened up a box and we set it up in this guy Wally's arcade. And it was talking and it was saying all kinds of stuff. What was it saying, Steve? What was Black Knight saying to me, like in 1980? What was it saying to me? <clears throat> I Play am better. the Black Knight. I, you know, I, I don't remember it all, but uh, yeah. Give me a little bit. <clears throat> I will slay you. I remember that. I just, you know, the pitch dropped electronically. Uh, it didn't say all that much. Yeah. It's but it was, it was. I still do that. When the ball drains, like a Mark's plan on my game. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Someone I really don't like, though, when they're doing it and they lose their ball, I go, <laughs> Will you have any speech in your upcoming game? I'm sorry? Will you be doing any speech in your upcoming game? Yeah, there'll be some. There'll be some. Right. Okay. And I'm a character. Okay. Will, will it be like, play better? <laughs> no. It's not going to be play better. Oh, okay. You yeah, think it's, of something it's new? Stuff we can't talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's nay on the A play better. Did the pizza arrive? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's more. No, they're setting it up? Yeah. You're going to bum rush the table when everything's done? No. Just don't try not to knock the lady down, okay? When she's working time. Let her get out. Yeah, it's okay. Let her get out of the way. If anybody wants seconds, there's plenty of pizza. Gabe. Uh, okay. Gabe, how are we doing there, buddy? We're getting, they're getting thirsty. They're I think the they're pizza. getting thirsty. They're okay. pizzas, right? Well, you, you, at least they didn't lose the recipe for the ice. Yeah, it's not that hard. Pinball takes a lot of time. Pinball is hard, right? Some people say that. I haven't said that. I'm too stupid. Pinball is great. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I don't know. How about we do a couple of questions if anybody has any questions for anybody? <laughs> There's the glass slipper. I mean. <laughs> this is the first audience so that knows everything. <laughs> Everybody, there's NDAs outside when you get the pizza. <laughs> our, <laughs> our attorney told us that by you eating the pizza, you've agreed to keep quiet. <laughs> and you can't divulge anything in here. And if anybody asks you, you just say, on advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer the question on the grounds that my answer may tend to incriminate me. <laughs> Don't ask me why I know that. <laughs> Don't ask me why I know that. How many well, times how many times do you have to say that before you actually memorize that? Yeah. Crazy. No questions, really? Yes. Table? A table. Okay. I don't know. I, I, are you a pinball person? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Very the kid's a pinball person. Go ahead. Um, He's got his thumb okay, so on. All those elements that go into the table, uh, would you say there's one thing that if that isn't right, that turns this game into a bad game? And if so, what would that be? If Steve Ritchie doesn't design it, maybe. Yeah. Or Mark Seiden doesn't design it, or Eric doesn't design it. Wait, he's telling Steve what you just said right now. He's translating into our gibberish. 
Steve, Steve speaks fluent gibberish. Are you waiting for an answer? <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for a Coca-Cola. Right. I can't think of one. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a million aspects, right, to every pinball machine. Uh, there's a million ways to screw it up, right? Well, you got to you know, do things with taste. Be very self-critical. That's the magic. Can you, can you really tell yourself that, oh, no, this works. Oh, it kind of works. No, it doesn't work. And somebody else comes along and goes, that thing sucks. Okay, that's it. It's got to go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you make the right decisions, it's never a problem. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I was really, really happy to see so many young kids in the tournament today. I mean, I think that was really spectacular. And here, participating, shut up, <laughs> <laughs> participating, participating, and having fun and getting all the trophies. Game ate it all. all. OK. Well, there's got to be more there. So you know, um, we're open. We're open, obviously, when you have Toy Story, which is a family-themed game, and then you have The Godfather, which is a family-themed game, just a different family. Right? <laughs> I mean, you're you're open. You're open to uh, do any kind of theme at all, right? So uh, yes, the answer would be yes. Uh, it's not particularly aimed at any exact because we're we're bringing more people into pinball. And what I thought would happen with Godfather, since it's one of my favorite movies, um, what happened with Godfather and what's happening, and, and our biggest distributor in the country, Mike Dodona, is sitting right here. And he'll tell you. And his lovely daughter, and his lovely daughter Michaela, is next to him, too. So what's happening with Godfather is that people are finding out there's a Godfather game. And they're buying a Godfather game as their first pinball machine. And then you know what happens after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything goes uh, sideways after that. The guy's, guy's putting an extension on his house, and he's <laughs> taking another job. You know, like, so, but, but it's really been great. And uh, I've, I've gone to a couple of people's homes in the last couple of weeks where uh, games are getting set up, and I surprised people with... Uh, I went with cannolis, and I went to help them set up games and stuff like that. And it was a lot of fun to see them play their first pinball machine. And I got a text from some guy at 3 in the morning the other day. He was still playing the game. I wasn't waiting for his text. I was sleeping. <laughs> but uh, I didn't see that until I woke up, and he was still playing. He sent all pictures and everything like that. By the way, did anybody see on Facebook a little while ago somebody couldn't fit their topper? For the, yeah. for the Godfather game and the ceiling. Did you see what the guy did? He put the, he put the guys, the bad guys, on the sides of his game, like on a shelf, so they're here and here, and they're shooting at you. I'm like, I got to tell you, it reminded me of the time I sold somebody a fishtails and we delivered it years ago, a pinball sales, and the guy it couldn't fit on the ceiling, and I had to come back with wire, and he put it on the shelf so that when he got it, the fish would bang on the shelf and everything like that. I'm like, that's when I knew the pinball people were a little different than everybody else. And I said, maybe that's an inkling that, you know, like, I want my toy, but I, I want everything about my toy. I don't want to give anything up. So, yeah, I know that was a long-winded answer, but yes, yes. We're, uh, we're trying to hit everybody, and, you know, I have to be mindful of the world market, too. Because what might play well in America might not play well in Australia or Europe and everything. Like, if I wanted to do a baseball game, it would probably go well in America. Uh, it probably wouldn't sell well in Australia or UK like that. So, you know, if I did, huh? So you doing a FIFA game? FIFA game, I'd love to do that. We get messy and we're all set. Yeah, why not? Why not? Question? Yes.
Well, we have two lines, and right now we're running two different games. Uh, so you figure that out, okay? Um, you know, what happens, it, it was related to parts, and it always comes down to parts, right? You know, you hear people still talk about supply chain issues and everything. We have an amazing procurement department. Our buyers are, <laughs> they're amazing. They're amazing. The communication they have with the designers and engineers in the company, the sourcing they have, um, and what they do to get parts to us. I can't really say we have a problem with, with parts. Uh, we pay very well, um, so our vendors are really uh, partners with us. So, you know, if you're asking if uh, you'll have more than two games a year kind of question, uh, for me, ideally, I'm on record to say, you know, every nine or ten months, I'd love to see another game. So, you know, will you see Steve's game this year? Stay tuned. Maybe not at this show. Not at this show. Thank you, Gabe. All right, Gabe. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want some money? No. Right. I gave it the office. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, everybody, help yourself. He's all right. Um, yes, you had a question. Okay. Yes. As a younger woman, right, right. Right. So so uh, when I started the company in 2011 on January 1st, I announced that I announced that the first game we were going to do was Wizard of Oz, and um, a lot of people laughed at me, uh, criticized me. The reason was because my daughter loved the Wizard of Oz. My daughter Jen, uh, growing up, must have watched that movie a thousand times a day. And she mimicked everything that Dorothy did. She had a basket. She had a little dog. She did everything that Dorothy did. And I said, you know, these testosterone, you know, based games that were out with, um, let me just say in a tasteful way, female anatomy that appealed to teenage boys, which was the thing at the time. I wanted to go to something that would appeal to women and girls. And that's what I did with Wizard of Oz. And I remember saying at a show, somebody was criticizing me, an operator, and I'm a game operator too, and the operator says, I don't know that that'll work. I says, I'll tell you what, you put that in a bar, every girl in the bar will be playing that, and every guy will be right there with them. And that's exactly what happened. It's still today, you know, no disrespect to these guys. For me personally, it's still my favorite game is Wizard of Oz. Because we didn't put the plumbing, we didn't put the kitchen sink in that game. We put the whole plumbing department in that game. So it was everything. Who has a Wizard of Oz game? OK. Yeah, so you know, um, I'm mindful of that. Uh, Toy Story is for everybody. Willy Wonka is for everybody. Dialed In was for everybody. Hobbit was really for everybody. You know, we've tried to, we've tried to, you know, it's difficult. Companies, you hear different companies make things, and they try to be everything to everybody. And it's real hard to be everything to everybody. You know, we're trying not to lose our, our way in what we design. Our games are very distinctly different than any other game in the world. I mean, if you see one of our games, you'll know it's, it's, it's the same as all the others, but completely different than all the others, you know. So, but we're mindful of that. You know, I, I, you know if we could do a Barbie game, really, and, and put it out there in, in some kind of way, I don't know. Never say never, but thank you for that. And thank you for being part of Pinball, too, because I remember being at shows years ago. Yeah, exactly. The sisters. The sisters. The sisters. You know, I remember being at pinball shows. I remember being at pinball shows, and there were just us freaks and geeks and people that didn't shower, and if there was, they'd be crop dusting. They'd be crop dusting, you know. And, uh, you know, there were, no, there were no women there. There were no children there. Certainly there were no children there. There were no women there. And if there was a woman there, there were like 25 guys trying to find out, the, you know, what was going on. So. 
Next question. Before <laughs> I get in trouble. Yes. Yes, sir. He's a game designer. This guy works for American Pinball. Anybody know him? Yeah. Ryan. Yes, Ryan. It it does feel more confident because I have a like pretty much design game at this point. So um, it's it's just me. Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, it's just me just waiting my turn to be able to tell you all about it. Like it's like, what can I say? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a different feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, thank you. And, and you too. <laughs> May the best designer win. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> may, the, may the best designer win. It's okay. I'll be the first one to pre order your game. That's pretty cool. You know, by the way, we're hiring. We're always hiring. We're always hiring good people. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're hiring, we're looking for people all the time to do all kinds of things, from from putting games in boxes to designing them. So uh, I'm always out there searching around, and I'm looking for pinball people especially. Not people that work that like Grumman Aircraft, building a jet fighter or something like that, you know. Maybe Steve wants that guy, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I want I want people that know the difference between a cornfield and a play field. So that's what I say. Right? Okay. We have any other questions? Yeah, and a guy in the back over there. Can you translate? Can you, can you translate that to Steve in gibberish, please? Uh, hang on. I need a translation. Okay. So, how do you decide when a shot is too easy or too hard? How do you decide when a shot is too hard? Uh, you look at the room you got. And, um, Talk into your like microphone. Testing one, two, damn it. Better. This level needs to go up. Hello, testing one, two. No, I've been turned down. Definitely turned down on purpose, damn it. You're lucky Fred I'm Young isn't you're lucky Fred Young isn't here. Just kidding. All right. <sighs> I don't know, you know. You have so much room. Uh, there if like let's say you want to put in three shots and you have, you know, like five inches wide. You can uh, there's a lot of things you can do to feed balls in from you don't really need the five inches to incorporate three shots if you play your cards right. It's hard to explain, but I mean it's easier to understand. It's just it probably means extending shots, making one longer than another so that the ball can get in. Um, and bad shots, uh, a million times I have gone, you know, I've just said, that's it, take it out and do another shot, a different shot. And that happened several times on the game I'm working on now, just because we had better opportunities that came up for feeds. I'm a feed, no, I, a fiend. <laughs> a feed fiend. That's it. I want feeds. I want. I want. I want the ball to come back to the flippers whenever I can. You know. And it's like uh, you would think that's easy, but if you make the game fast enough, it's not easy. Or it can be. I don't know. You can shoot it careful and, and maybe avoid some problems. Uh, I'm not sure I answered your question, but. <laughs> uh. Remember, though, that the said? question had to be translated through two different people to me. So basically, you shoot the game, and it, and everybody tells you it sucks, and you have to fix it. It's like, <laughs> um, but like, there's a whole corner of my play field that I just scrapped from the first Whitewood. It would, it would just did not shoot the way I expected to. Um, so yeah, it's just iteration that's uh you think it's going to work and you build it and it doesn't so you fix it <laughs> yes
you can you can build it up in virtual, uh, like VPX or something first. Um, I did a lot of um, like CAD work first. Uh, I designed 3D first. Um, so um, what I did is just have like every shot return, a, a sketch of every shot return. Where is that likely to go if it was going like full speed? Um, every ricochet off of every target, calculate that and like, like, okay, you can move it a little bit. Where did I hit it on the flipper and like, see where does that go? So you can see the range, things like that. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of people like to work with virtual pinball first and like lay it out. Uh, I know Ryan's like that. Um, but I am more of a like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to draw it in 3d first and then I want to actually feel it. Like, um, there are things that I've designed in 3d that I was like, this is never going to work and it worked perfectly the first time. Like, so. Sidebar. Yes. Yeah, we need somebody to test play everything. Sure. Okay, well, go to 1850 Greenleaf Avenue, Elk Grove Village, Illinois, 60007. Tell them that Jersey Jack sent you. No, I'll text it to you. I'll write, I'll write it down on this piece of tablet stone so that you can, <laughs> so that you can take it. Get that man a chair. By the way, Gabe just told me that there's drinks out there. If anybody is like thirsty or dying of thirst and you want to get something to drink, you can go. Okay. Yes, sir. I try. I have no clue. I have no clue. I'm, I'm not doing this long enough, really. Things, you know. I have friends in the stock market, I have friends in real estate, I have friends that are in Bitcoin, I have friends that are in gold, I have friends that are in all kinds of crazy things, and they ask me questions like that as if I actually know. And all I could say is, you know, things go in cycles. When things are going good, they don't go good long enough, and when things are going bad, they go bad too long. But everything goes in a cycle. I could tell you this, long term, I remember thousands of pinball machines I sold. Uh, you know, if I go back to 2000, I was buying Adams families from Europe for 400 bucks, reconning them, putting a lot of time in them, put another five, six hundred bucks in them, and selling them for 1,800 dollars. And I thought, like, what we were, you know. And that game today is worth, you know, a bundle, even a crappy one you don't see. And a wise man, a very wise man, once told me that he never got stuck with a pinball machine. And I'm going to believe that, because, look. When you buy something, you use it, you expect to lose money on it. I think uh, COVID spoiled a lot of people. You know, you bought something, you could play it six months or a year and sell it and make a grand, you know. But a lot of new people came into the hobby, and a lot of new people want to buy games. We're still getting people that come into the hobby and they want to spend uh, all kinds of money and get an instant collection. They want the oldies, they want the new ones, so... I think if you have some pinball machines, I think they're a the worse place you could put your money. So I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's going to go up a little bit. It's going to go down a little bit. If you see something, by the way, and not just my games, but if you see something that you want, that you really like, whether it's pinball related or not, just do it. You know, eat the piece of cake or do it. Life is too short, really. Life is too short. Joey. Joey. Will we ever see a wide body? Yeah. Oh. Like yours? Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know if anybody can see what's here. This is 100, 125 cannolis. <laughs> Joey! You get the first cannoli! Pick what you want. This pistachio. Are your fingers clean? Okay. All right, we're going we're gonna to have those in a little while. Thank you. Wide body? I don't know. I have to consider it. You know, I was told that you got to go to the wide body wood tree. Oh, 
and that the unicorn had to fly up to the top of the mountain. So I don't know. If you know, you know. Gabe, what the hell do you want? Oh, okay. It's going to stab me, I think. Yes, that gentleman over there. Good luck. Right. So you've been designing a while. Yeah. While we're talking. What do you think? Uh, of, like, I could probably take another question while he's figuring that out. Like, uh, I'll just wait another minute. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so what's the gist of it? So you've designed in many different eras. Yeah. How the hell do you do what you do, Steve? What do you think about modern uh, deep rule sets versus more I don't think they're rule modern. Sets. I think I think deep rule sets have been around for a long, long time. I mean, like don't tell us. Tell them. We know. We know, Steve. Tell them. Please, somebody give me an example of a modern rule set. Your, your description of what that is. Godfather. What? Godfather. What game? Godfather. Godfather? Me. I, I, I better answer the question the right way. I don't know how deep it is I, because I can't get there. Yeah, but I, I don't mind. I also, I don't want to be influenced by other people's games, so I don't look. I don't play much. I just do what I have to do. Um, but uh, rule sets that are deep uh, are great. Um, I am not that kind of a player. I'm every man's, I don't know. I'm, you're a loser. Well, there's only a few great players. Yeah, the rest of the players are average, you know, and I try to make them happy too. If I need an extra ball here, I will tell the programmers I need an extra ball here because I'm not going to be get able to go any further in the game, and I want to, and this would be good for average players, not just good players. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The guy knows his stuff, you know, really. It's real hard to stump Steve. He knows his stuff. He's doing this a really long time. Next question, if we have one. Yes, sir. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I know you guys have reduced orbit. I'm just wondering, like, where you are in the progress of your time here in the program. Or On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline. Thank you. <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah, we're working on it. It's, we're working on everything. That's the problem. You work on everything, but you got to give some things priority and some things secondary and all of that stuff. But yes, sir. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. New England Patriots. Yes. Okay. Not my football team. <laughs> okay. Don't throw anything. Is that for me? Yeah. Uh, am I a sales guy? I thought my game sold themselves really. Well, you the IP for the, uh, like for well I think what's I think what really sells games is the gameplay, right? If the game is a good game and you have a bad theme, you still have a bad game. You have a bad game with a good theme, a good license. You know, that's what I think. Um, there are games out there right now that don't have any license at all, that are older games, that are really great pinball machines. You know? Well, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, see me afterwards. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's always gameplay. Theme is important. It makes it a little sweeter. You know, like, um, if you like something, then you buy it. I mean, we have people we know that if they hear about a theme and they're pinball people, they want it sight unseen because they love that movie or they love that band or whatever it is. And then they might get the game and say, everybody okay? There is something to drink. Who is, who's choking? Come on. Something to drink. Take a drink. Um, okay, great. But 
But, you know, the, the problem is uh, they play it and then they find out that it's not really a good game, even though it had a good theme and they wind up selling it. So I think um, I still think it's important to play the game or have somebody you know play the game or watch a video of a good player playing the game so you could see what the game can do. And I'm a player like Steve. I love to play, but I can't get that far in there. You know, i got to take the glass off and play it with my hand and, <laughs> you know, get it to do everything it's supposed to do. And then maybe I could see the end of the wizard mode of uh, Wizard of Oz or something like that. You know, find out what it does. Yes. This is your second question. Okay. Well, we're going to keep an eye on you. Yeah, I, we have a historian here that could explain that to you. It's been it's been tried. What we have done though, it's a good idea. You know, if I if I'm not so good, maybe set it on extra easy. There are a lot of presets, install presets in our game, so you can just go in the menu and install like extra easy or harder. Or, you know, you didn't have to go through every setting to go through a hundred settings to try to figure out what makes that. So we shortcut it for you, you know. So, you know, if that could be on the outside of the cabinet kind of thing, who knows, maybe one, maybe one day, but, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, if our programmers watch this, uh, it would be one more thing on their list. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. I'm deaf, in case you guys didn't know. I mean, I don't hear well. What? Go ahead. At what point in the design process do you know the heart of the game, like what the game should be about and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, it's when Chris Franchi comes in the room and he goes, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Um, but I could look at a game and, and continuously work on it. Uh, one of the big tricks is to, to not take it too far... Uh, I don't know. It's um, what could I say? I mean, like past I mean, the, the point of no return. You know where it's good. We we know this game is good. We definitely do. There's no question because so many people are involved in it and uh, and they like it and it's 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 a good uh, it's it's a breakout in many ways. So the first time for a few things and that sort of stuff. I don't know if he answered the question, but that was... I don't know if that was such a good that that was description. I am tired, plus... I actually, you know, Jack can just talk. And, uh, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Oh, oh, wise guy. Nice. Anybody else? I just, you know, yes? Yes. Can somebody translate that for me? Original versus license. Well, we did an original... Uh, took forty, yeah. Took took forty two months to do. Um, it's hard. It's it's very hard doing an original game because you have a blank piece of paper, so you can wander all over the place. With a license, um, you know, you kind of know the story or you create a story. Uh, would we do one again? Possibly. I would not say no, but uh, anything's possible. Um, here's another interesting item. Uh, I thought he wasn't going to talk again, right? <laughs> He didn't hear you. The item is this. Uh, I, I made Black Knight sort of rage, and it's like young people didn't know what it was. They don't know. I don't, it didn't sell as well as many of my other games uh, because they didn't know and because it wasn't a license. Uh, a license that's good is definitely a great tool. I mean, uh, I, uh, we, bo we all know a guy who always said this, title, title, title. We're not going to say his name, but it, I think it began with S. 
Sam or something? No, that, that was his dad's name. <laughs> but uh, but he's right. He is right about that. Title, title, title. I think it is very important to make a game that people want to experience what they already experienced in a movie or through music or through, you know, any other kind of mechanical... Um, I, I, I can't explain it, but... Uh, yeah, you got the message. <laughs> title. That's me, though. Okay. Yes, sir. I have no questions, Jack. I just want a cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> it has been said that an army marches on its side. I know. I'm trying to feed this army here to get it marched further. Have you been feeding this army since it's been that long? Happy to do it. I want to thank you personally, oh. as I always will, for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, it was yes, David. My question is, what's in the brown box? We'll get to that in a minute. You're not, we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Stand, what the hell's with this thing? Hello. That's better. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm screwing up your audio. I'm making you look bad. Thanks. Th give a big thanks to our audio person, our technical, our technical, technical wizard, technical wizard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. One one day, the guy, the guy you're over there called me. Yeah, you had your hand up. I had a question. What was it? Dave can't talk. Is, 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 uh, are, the, are the games coming up and seeing Mark going to push the, the deck, deck system to its potential that I know it has with you know, toys and lights and everything? So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Just how far I can go beyond yes is the, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't understand it, Gabe. Shots are not toys. What did he say? Are you going to push the envelope on Jersey Jack games for lights and toys? We always will. Yeah. We always will, no doubt. Steve's game's got a couple of lights on it, I can tell just, you that. Just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> it's got a couple of lights. <laughs> you know, what I was going to say after your comment was, years ago Gabe called me up one day. And he said, hey, um, I'm thinking of starting a pinball show. You know, what do you, what do you think about that idea? And I, I pulled him off the ledge, and I told him it would be a great idea, it would be a great thing to do. And this pin and this tastic, his partner, that started the show, and they're together. <laughs> and and it's, it's, a, it's a great show. It's a lot of work. Uh, I wouldn't want to, I mean, here I started a pinball company, and I can tell you I don't want to start a pinball show. <laughs> so it's a whole different thing because everybody criticizes everything you do. Gabe, the pizza was cold, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, you filthy animal. Keep the change. Yes, one or two more questions, and then I want to move to the next part of the program. God bless America. <laughs> that technology is in dialed in, and it's, it's the toy in the middle of the play field. This pinball 2000, it's right there, and it's something we might use again on our games. It's a great, it's a great thing to have. Uh, pinball 2000 was a good thing at the time. I was an operator, and I remember I was at um, the amusement show when it was revealed, and you know all the muckety mucks that designed it uh, were there to explain to us operators how stupid we are because. They made it so that we could actually leave an extra play field in our trucks so then we could go into the bar and pull out the dirty play field because we were too stupid to clean it and fix it and we could put a brand new play field in there and then bring it back to the shop and clean it and everything. And everybody was asking questions at that show. And I waited a little while and I looked at the gameplay. I didn't play the game yet because it was a big, big crowd around the games. And I said to a designer who I won't name. These games are going to get boring real fast. And everybody got quiet. And they didn't know who the hell I was. I was just the game operator from Brooklyn. I said, all the shots have to go to the middle of the play field to interact with the screen. I said, after the third game, nobody wants to play this game. And, you know, it's, an, it's a novelty. It's kind of cool. You know, a lot of people like the Star Wars better. I sold Star Wars through FAO Schwartz. 
So after Yo Schwarz, when, when Williams went out of business in 1999 on October 25th, um, I had that game in the FAO Schwarz catalog, and they were selling the game for 57.95. Right? No, I'm sorry. They were selling it for 7,500 dollars. They were buying it from me for 57.95, and that was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money in 1999. And a lot of celebrities bought them, and they got into pinball, and it was a great thing. But you know, good ideas, uh, they're good, uh, but you got to keep them alive. It's like a plant. you got to keep watering it and fertilize it and get it in sunshine. But I hope I answered your question. Thank you. One more question. Okay. So I write a column in Replay Magazine. Replay Magazine is the premier magazine in the coin-op amusement world. And my column is called Jersey Jack. And the editor of the magazine, Eddie Adlam, gave me that name like, I don't know, 18 or 19, 20 years ago, something like that, when I started writing. And I didn't like the name Jersey Jack because I'm from Brooklyn. And he says, well, you're Jersey Jack and you're going to like it. <laughs> so I said, okay. So after a while, I got used to it. And then when it came time to name the company something, a lot of my customers from pinball sales at the time was saying, why don't you call it Jersey Jack? And I was like, I don't like that name. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that name. But I listened to the customers, because the customer's always right, and we named the company Jersey Jack. But the point is, I wrote a column last month, and it's just one little page. I just want to read it to you. And it's about somebody in the room, and it's Big Mike, one of pinball's biggest fans. And it says, Many years ago, I met Big Mike, the donor junior, who owned automated services in Milford, Connecticut, a pinball distributor who sells mainly to home customers. When I was managing Mondial's Springfield, New Jersey office in 1997, Automator was buying so much equipment there, they had one person dedicated just to Mike's account. When you pulled up to his building, there were two Coca-Cola tractor trailers at his building every single day. So he must have been doing something big. He started with a gumball machine, and through his hard work and grit and determination became a force in the industry. He looks like a tough guy. He's a big marshmallow. He supports many charitable causes and has done so for years to a fault. He never says no to anyone in need. Never, ever. I know he's lent people money and he never paid them back. And he never sent anybody from the Godfather to go find them either. <laughs> uh, he supports many charitable causes and has done so for years to a fault. He never says no to anyone in need. He's also very humble and rarely steps into the spotlight. Sorry, Mike. While Mike is very much old school, he's also high-tech savvy. He has an amazing showroom. People visit. Sometimes they visit for weeks at a time before they buy a game. He's hands-on, but there's no pressure. He remains as calm and cool as a cucumber. Right, Michaela? In short, his customers love him. So do I. His steadfast support of everything pinball has earned him a place as one of the game's largest distributors in the world. At Jersey Jack Pinball, we wanted to salute Big Mike for his love of the game, so we put him into all thousand of the Collector Edition games. As, as Big Mikey, where he's a perfect fit, Looking at the playfield character, you immediately recognize him. Over the years, our relationship has transcended business. Mikey has become one of my very best friends. I admire his love of his family first, and then of life and his ideas, and his ideas for the industry. I continue to admire and learn from him all the time, and now I get to see him on one of my games. How cool is that? Congratulations and thank you for everything, Mikey. Salute Centon. And guess what? Today is Mike's birthday. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We gotta get we gotta get somebody with a camera on the cake. Come on over here. I'm afraid to touch it. Look at that cake, Mikey. You know, uh, Gabe said to me, what's Mike's favorite cake? 
And I asked your wife, and your wife said, Mike never met a cake he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what it is. Thank you. I love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Big Mike. Happy birthday to you. I know, I know you don't talk much, but... Here, here's a thank microphone. You. No, no, no. Say I'm going to go. No, no. If, if, if I, I can... I thank everyone. I thank everyone. I've made a lot of new friends and Team Ball is my first team. And Team Ball does a lot of them in this room. Team Ball brings the best people together. So I love you all. We love you, Mike! Yeah. Say that. Let me take your picture. Nice. All right, you're going to cut the cake? Who's cut? Gabe, are you going to cut the cake? Go ahead. Mikey, make the first cut for good luck. Okay. I'm curious to see what kind of cake it is, because I think this is my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're going to the Mexican place. There's pe one slice of pizza. Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful. May I have the corner pizza? <laughs> you can have anything you want, Mike. There's a plate there. There's a fork. The Gabe will help you out. And really, Mike touched on it. You know, the games bring us together, but it's about relationships and friendships. And that's really what we celebrate together. You know, we might not agree on football teams and baseball teams and politics. Eh, maybe we do agree on politics. Maybe not. But you know what? There's nothing that brings us together better than pinball. And That's I love all of you people, and I hope you have a really great time the rest of the show. Come on up and get some cake in an orderly fashion, please. And cannolis, and go sit back down. There's drinks outside. And if you think of any other questions, uh, maybe you're going to beat something out of Steve. I don't know. Give, feed him a couple of drinks at the bar. Thanks. Love you guys. <laughs>